Hello, listeners. I'm your host, Jeff Hatter. Thank you for tuning in to Yerba Travels Podcast, the place that delivers all the marvelous wonders of our beautiful world from first-hand accounts of people who live in these exotic places. After listening, head over to yerbatravels.com to find out more cool information. That's yerbatravels.com. And don't forget to subscribe and join the Yerba Travels community. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy today's conversation. All right, my guest today is joining us, who is, uh, she's a native from the land of the morning calm and now lives in the six. Her name is Yesa Lee. Yesa, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for reaching out for me. <laughs> hey, it's a pleasure to have you on here. I can't wait to uh, get into the interview. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Excellent. Well, why don't we start? Why don't you introduce yourself and then introduce, uh, you know, either where you're from or where you're living now? Oh, sure. Hi, guys. I'm Yesa Lee. Um, in Korean, my name means Jesus Love, and I'm studying performing art in New York uh, through online. So I'm currently located in Toronto, Canada, um, and I'm from Korea. <laughs> nice to see you guys. <laughs> That's excellent. Where in Korea are you from? Um, from Asan, which is kind of a small, small countryside city, <laughs> mm -hmm. like full of hot springs. Oh, I really miss my hot spring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Asan's a great place of, of, us, of uh, hot springs and so forth. So. Yeah, except for transportation. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Public transportation in Korea is fantastic, but in the countryside. Except for Asan. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Mm. Yeah, that's that's great. Well, actually, here in Korea, where I am today, is a special holiday for all of you listening. Today is Chuseok. Oh and yeah. Yeah, Chuseok Happy is Chuseok. the. That's right. Happy Chuseok to everybody listening. Chuseok is kind of like the harvest festival, right? And we celebrate mm -hmm. not just the harvest, but we also celebrate ancestors. Is that correct? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like it's kind of like Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, we can say, um, we are, we make, we make duck rice cake, some, mm -hmm. which we, we call it songpyeon, and we um, visit our family, like, because we're far apart, like, sometimes we cannot see each other, like, you know, for a long time, so we visit them in Chuseok. It's kind of like good family holiday. Yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned songpyeon, which is a delicious, delicious mm -hmm. treat, by the way, right? Yeah, I remember I used to make it with my grandma. Like, I, I'm going to make a rabbit. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's one, of the, that's one of the kind of cool things is mm -hmm. the desserts over here, the rice cake. Um, oh, yeah. Duck, that is called, right? Is, mm -hmm. is kind of made in special shapes during the holidays, right? Yeah, like we just... Um, I think it's made with rice, but you, how do you call it, like, press it? Press it, yeah, make, mash yeah, it. Yeah, press it, and yeah, compress it, and then you, I don't know, you make it your own shape. You can make, like, moon or rabbit, like me, <laughs> flower, yeah, a lot of shapes, like, I, I make a lot of shapes, like, I'm gonna make giraffe, and you make, like, this long <laughs> duck, I wish <laughs> some got <laughs> So when you stand up, does it have like a droopy head? Does it kind of hang down? Yeah, like, yeah. Like... <laughs> well, the problem is like we nobody can finish that, you know. We 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 make it and make it and make it, and no one eats it. Yeah, it's always we given. Eat it, but <laughs> yeah, you eat it, but it always seems to be given away after shusa. Yeah. <laughs> when people, you everyone, know, you go you somewhere. Some, you want some? Everyone. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, speaking of food, food is one of my favorite reasons for traveling. When oh, I travel, yes. I love going for the authentic foods and, mm -hmm. and this and that. So tell us, let's start with Korea. What, what in Korea is, in your opinion, the best authentic Korean food? Mm. Okay, so it depends on where you're from or like what kind of food you like. Like for some foreigners or some travelers, like 
kimchi because many people say oh, kimchi represents Korea is the food that represents Korea but it's kind of strong it's kind of strong for example my boyfriend he does not like kimchi so <laughs> so I really recommend you trying Korean chicken because in US and even in Toronto Korean chicken is top number one chicken like it's good. very very good it tastes really good mm. so it's like another level of chicken <laughs> like, yeah. um so i really recommend you try that but also if you want to try local food i really recommend you to try kimchi stew and with rice bulgogi bulgogi tastes really good too mm -hmm. yeah um and also korean pizza is so unique as well like um i noticed that in us or toronto they only have like cheese, pepperoni, Hawaiian, and that's it. But in Korea, you can add your own topic as much as you want, and it's pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. And delivery service in Korea is so good. So you can try Korean food, Chinese food, Japanese food with delivery services. So, Yeah, I think that's a great point, especially mm -hmm. in Korea. The delivery service, getting everything, um, all the different styles of food over here delivered mm -hmm. to you yeah. you can try any and whatever you want whatever you want like yeah but i really recommend bulgogi try bulgogi and try korean style barbecue samgyeopsal mm. can you and tell you us can... a little bit about what that what is bulgogi and what is samgyeopsal oh, for our listeners so bulgogi is a beef with um how can i explain this so bulgogi is they they make this a beef but cooked uh with with barbecue sauce mm -hmm. i don't know how they make that flavor but it's a beef <laughs> sorry <laughs> terrible explanation but it tastes really good you have to try it because i i can't explain the flavor <laughs> all right go korean try it barbecue uh-huh and korean barbecue um is a barbecue that you you can if you go to a restaurant like korean barbecue samgyeopsal restaurant you have to cook yourself like you can cook yourself it's kind of interesting experience i mean for me i've always been there and i thought that's normal but some people think like why do we have to cook our own food like that's why we're in the restaurant that's what my <laughs> boyfriend said like he was like so shocked how come they're not cooking for us and we're paying them but it's good good experience because unique uh it depends like if you can if you see it as a positive way or negative way but you can try and you can try and tell us about your own experience like oh it was good or bad but at least try and for me it is really good you can um is it a cabbage like you can make a sum with cabbage in mm -hmm. the cabbage you put rice you put um beef and put samjang, which is a magic sauce, <laughs> and you put it in your mouth and you will feel heaven. Yes, I, I agree. I think that's one of the, the staples in Korea is mm -hmm. samgyeopsal. Yeah. Uh huh. When my boyfriend experienced that, I, I taught him how to make sam, and he was like, ah, oh, that's a cabbage taco. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, you basically just substitute in the tortilla. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like bulgogi restaurants and samgip restaurants, I mean in Korea they're they're basically everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. what? You can just basically hop in a taxi or get on the subway and, and yeah. find one, right? Yeah. And after samgip so you can, you know, uh, not underage people, but drink a little bit. And then you can go for a karaoke because you can have a lot of fun in mm -hmm. Korea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do they call that when you go for dinner and then karaoke and then the third place and fourth place? Is there a term <laughs> for that? Sure. You know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what's the name? What's the term? Ilcha, <laughs> uh, samcha, satcha. Well, they go like a lot of chas. <laughs> Yeah, as many places so, as you like, go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's say we start with samgyeopsal. That's ilcha, number one. Mm -hmm. like first one. And then uh, let's say you went to coffee. or uh, Well, we don't go coffee. Let's say we went to karaoke. That's ilcha. 
-hmm. And again, if they want to eat something or drink more, they go samcha. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. just for the listeners, like il, i, sam, those are just numbers, right? One, two, yeah. three, mm -hmm. first place, mm -hmm. second place, one, third two, place. One, two, three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, you know, that was kind of shocking to me when I first came over here to Korea and we had um, what are called huishiks, which you know what huishiks are, just kind of the company yes. dinners. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And and then they, they told me that we're going to another place after dinner. <laughs> and then we went and had drinks at that place after dinner. And then they said, it's a third place. We went to karaoke and we had drinks at that place. And I'm going, is this, is this normal? And they go, yeah, yeah, this is just what we yeah. do over here. So normal. <laughs> yeah, which is fantastic about not just the food and drink culture, but just the Korean culture in general is how they stay yeah, together. They're, yeah, they're so passionate and like full of energy. Yes. Yeah. They mm -hmm. like they work a lot and they like um play, I mean enjoy a lot as well. <laughs> exactly. Work hard and play hard, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So what about Toronto? You've been in Toronto now for a bit. What's the food um, and culture like over there? Well, I asked my Canadian teacher, like, oh, what's the like food that we have to try here? But he said like um like that's the really hard question to tell because he said maybe Canadian, there is no like specific Canadian food because Canada is so diverse. You know, some people are from Mexico, some people, people are from Jamaica, Korea, China, Japan, everyone here is from different country. Mm -hmm. So they have their own food and there is no Canadian food. So he said like, like you, for example, you guys have kimchi, Japanese have sushi. Chinese have dim sum, but we have maybe poutine. Poutine? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, no thank you to poutine, but, <laughs> but uh, he said he uh, suggested me to go try um, maple syrup snow candy. Hmm. So this candy, because there's a, a lot of snow in Korea, I mean, in Toronto, mm -hmm. in winter time, you can find a lot of snow. So in this, like, in the winter, you can make this candy. You take the maple syrup, um, you can make it hot, and pour it in the snow. And then you roll the stick with it, and ta-da, it's a candy. Really? I tried it. It tastes like ice cream, and it tastes really good. It's very sweet, and it's unique, you know, it's because it's made with snow, like very soft. You can, you can feel it's melting in your mouth, like very softly. Good. Just, just don't get the yellow snow. Nobody wants the yellow snow. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Stay away from the yeah. yellow snow. Yeah, stay away from the city and try to go somewhere safe. Or the black. Yeah, don't get the oh, black no, no, no. snow either. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't want that. Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So how about Toronto? Like the, as you said, there are so many different like ethnic foods around there to go taste and try. Is it pretty easy to get to those places, whether you want to walk or public transportation, or do you need a car maybe? Mm, um, it depends on where you live. Maybe if you're living in downtown, yes, you will have more access to many things. But right. if you're not even living in downtown, I really recommend, I totally recommend you to have your own vehicle because of course transportation here is okay. It's not that bad as Asan, but <laughs> not the best. <laughs> Like I was so shocked really? that I lose my connection of my phone on the subway. I was mm. so shocked. And I, I was just calling my friend and I, I said like, oh, I'm in the subway, I might lose connection. And she, like, she was Korean and she was like, I thought you were in Canada. <laughs> I thought you were in, in the city, how, how come? <laughs> I know, I know this is how it is. <laughs> Korea is um, Korea's very much developed in that, that technical yeah, aspect. Like technology, yeah, the technology is like mm. very good. Like mm -hmm. we, you can use even Wi-Fi in the subway. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't lose calls. I told my boyfriend calls. that and he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> City of the future. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole new world over here. Exactly. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what I had since I lose it. And I've been before I lose it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you mentioned that you would recommend getting a car to travel, right? With, mm -hmm. in, in Toronto. And that's one of the, that's another thing that I love. Uh, when I do travel, I always try to rent or, you know, use some kind of motor vehicle, mm -hmm. whether I rent that's a car really, when I travel mm -hmm. to Japan or I really Australia. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or a scooter, you know, mm -hmm. you said that that's something that you would uh, recommend if somebody rents a car, is it pretty easy to kind of navigate, like drive um, around those cities? Well, um, yeah, but you just have to be careful with the exits, like follow the navigation mm. and know your exits. Cause like, if you don't, like if you miss one, like you will suffer. <laughs> well, you will, there's always alternative way, but you have to go all around because Canada is so wide and huge. So <laughs> just mm -hmm. know your exits and pretty much that's it. Like it's very organized and quite easy to find the way. Yeah. If you have navigation. Because yeah, that... Korea is quite like complicated. The, the road is quite complicated. Right. I guess, but uh, in Canada, it's like a whole, whole avenue is like, let's say Shepherd West, like whole Shepherd West, Shepherd West, Shepherd West, and then Shepherd East and Eglinton is quite like um, very organized, as you say. Mm -hmm. All, just be careful when you go, to, go on a highway, um, know your exits. <laughs> Yeah. So the navigation works pretty well. I'm so used to Korea where everything that we have is <laughs> navigation. So yeah. I'm just kind of curious about there. The navigation is pretty spot on and tells you where. Yeah, to go. yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it sometimes tell you where the police car is coming. <laughs> oh, that's good. So, yeah. <laughs> that's good. You, know, you don't want any trouble. Just be mm -mm. careful. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. So one of the reasons I like to get a car is because typically when I, when I travel or when most people travel, we always go to the big city because they're the easiest to get to, right? Uh -huh. That's where the airports mm -hmm. are. And that's where, you know, kind mm -hmm. of the tourist things are, but I like having that car because I can go, you know, an hour North or in any direction and find some amazing, amazing, amazing places. Yeah. I'm telling you it's amazing. So where you are, have you traveled, you know, kind of, out and about for about an hour or so away from where you are and you know what, uh -huh. was it like? yeah, yeah, what yeah. would you recommend to people who travel to Toronto if they want to get out a little bit mm, like even inside of Toronto there are a lot of beautiful places like there are a lot of amazing parks and especially um I really recommend you to go Woodpine, Woodpine Beach mm -hmm. uh, it's a uh, so there's a lake Ontario Lake this is, which is a huge lake. So when you arrive there, you will think, is this lake? Like, it looks like ocean. But there's a swan and there's goose and ducklings. It's so cute and so beautiful. And another park that I really recommend you is um, Cathedral Bluffs Park. Amazing place, amazing place to be. You can see the beautiful hills and you can chill on the beach, swim. Mm -hmm. And I also went out, like, we drive, like, three hours. We, w we went outside from Toronto. Um, oh. But that place, like, it was, like, in the wood. Like, it was a camping place. It was a camping place, okay. uh, like, totally in the wood. But I don't think you really have to go that far because you can find those good places in Toronto as well because you have to drive a lot, so... Mm -hmm. So I really recommend you to go Woodpine and Cathedral of Love's Park. You and will it, love it. And about how far outside of the city are those places? Um, it's not even far. Like it's actually the Woodpine, Woodpine mm -hmm. Beach and uh, um, Ontario Place is connected. Oh. Ontario Place is so close to downtown. Okay. So it's, I was so shocked. Like, wow, right? Right next to downtown, there is a beach and there is a Toronto Island. Toronto Island is very beautiful too. Ah, okay. Like, wow. Like, this city is combination with nature and the city. Like, beautiful. right next to you, like, you can see the view of the city. And also, you can see the beach side. Wow. It's such a beautiful city. Wow.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, you you don't have to go very far to see new places mm-hmm. or take new adventures, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So so all those places are kind of within an hour of of Toronto, and they're all connected, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. And yeah, another thing that you mentioned is kind of the wooded place. You said it was about three hours away. Uh huh. Um, people love to go camping, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's a great that you know things like that. Three hours. To me, it doesn't seem that far away. You know, I'm used to driving for hours. So well, I'm from Korea. Maybe that's why I'm from small country. So three hours was a lot. And we had kids. So the kids were like, well, are we there yet? Are we there yet? You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, if you want to know the place, I'll, I can tell you. Okay. Um, where is the... It looks, um, I'll go, okay, this, this is quite complicated. Algo Queen Provincial Park. Algo oh. Queen Provincial Park. So this place is amazing too. This place, they, I saw a lot of people kayaking, but when we went to camping, we, we went like two days, I guess. Like we, you can hike the mountains. Um, you can see so many beautiful views, but when we arrived there it started to rain really heavy so it was really scary to sleep in the tent and like water's coming in so like we hear the thunders and kids crying (laughs) we can't even make the fire because woods are wet oh my god so adventure yeah so (laughs) just look (laughs) adventure i know i I tell you i i've actually uh I've been camping one time, kind of in the same situation where it's just mm-hmm. been pouring down rain. And it, I mean, you either leave, you can get your car, you know, sleep in the car or leave, you know, but then you don't have a story to tell. Yeah. <laughs> your story, uh, know, it yeah. rained and I got in my car. Well, nobody wants to hear <laughs> that story. <laughs> because the, the rain, rain was so heavy one tent came down like fell Ooh. because the rain like we so we in the in, at the night like we hear like and because of the that because of that the kids in the tent they go into the car and the adults came out and they fixed the tent it was crazy crazy but it was fun <laughs> now that it's passed <laughs> yeah and everybody's safe, which is good. You know, when you have kids it's, or children there, it's a little bit different. But yeah, mm-hmm. at least everybody was safe. Yeah, even the kids now, they can laugh about it. Like, oh, yeah, I remember the camping. It was raining so heavy. Yeah. And even if it's raining, mosquitoes attack. So remember to bring mosquito spray. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Always remember <laughs> mosquito spray. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the popular things here in Korea is called glamping. I don't know if you ever went glamping here. So it's like glamour camping. And basically they set up uh, Mm -hmm. these tents, Mm -hmm. but they're not your traditional kind of camping tents. They're more like, uh, like the tents you see in safaris. Like when you go out on safari and you set up like a tent for a week, they're kind of square house looking. Oh. And they have, they have amenities. Uh, they have air conditioning and TVs and beds and. Are you serious? <laughs> oh yeah. So it's, it's, it's just it's like kind of. It's just glamour a... camping. Glamping. Ooh. Wow, I would love to try that. <laughs> wow, yeah. I would love to try that. <laughs> yeah, for those people who really don't like the outdoors, don't like camping and and so forth, this is a great alternative that that mm. Korea offers. Uh, and I but see it working they want to feel the feeling of camping. <laughs> yeah. So they sit outside for a little bit and have their barbecue, like we were talking about before. They cook their samgyeop and so forth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Uh-huh. And then at nighttime, they go inside for the comforts. They watch TV, go in the air uh-huh. conditioning or heat, heated room. Yeah, or oh, yeah. I can't, I can't imagine. Like, oh, they drink and then, like, eat food and talk, mm-hmm. play games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. I love that idea, actually. Yeah, I think a lot of people, I think it's, I mean, it's boomed over here and I think it would take off in a lot of places. Just, 
you know, especially now during this, this COVID time where people are tired of being indoors, but they're not used yeah. to travel. They're not used to camping and being with mosquitoes and <laughs> rain and everything. I never experienced it in my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a different experience, but glamping offers that great kind of alternative, you know, mm -hmm. instead of a hotel room where you're just kind of mm -hmm. stacked on top of people, you get to experience uh -huh. kind of both worlds. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Kind nice of outside part. more, more access to outside and feeling yeah. of like, Oh, we're somewhere. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they're usually in places that are pretty close to the mountains or national parks. So you get that kind of fresh air you're out of the city, you know, you're not around all the smog and stuff. So mm -hmm. that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really good. nice. I, re I would love to try that when I, when, once I go back to Korea or somewhere yeah. someday. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to, you'll have to. Yeah. Have you tried? Uh, I, I did it once. Um, and it was okay. It uh -huh. was, it was all right. Actually the one, <laughs> the one that I was in, we went in the winter time and the heater uh -huh. was broken. So we didn't have heat inside. And oh my, did you bring any sleeping bed or well, sleep, I mean, sleeping, how do you call it? The <laughs> We didn't take anything because everything's supposed to be provided for you at these oh glamping spots, but there was a bed with a blanket. Well, it was just kind of like a, not a summer blanket, but a thin comforter, which oh. definitely was not warm enough for winter time. <laughs> oh my, and no heater? No way. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we got stuck. So I always now, anytime we go camping, I haven't been glamping since then, but anytime we go now, I always take Check. an extra sleeping bag. Yeah, extra, <laughs> always have my own. <laughs> yeah, like my boyfriend and I, we didn't bring sleeping bag so we just have had to um like wear all the clothes we can and sleep and you it was raining one day <laughs> i mean we never expected we were like oh it's gonna be good weather and it's okay you know we just brought a lot of blankets but when it gets you know it like maybe it was a good idea to bring air bed as well because it was raining and the water was coming in so mm. we had to put like um get the paper newspaper and like, <laughs> like put it in the, put it under the blanket and yeah stuff like that it was crazy <laughs> at night we we removed the water and like put the newspaper okay baby <laughs> wow wow <laughs> well there are always experiences and i think that's mm -hmm. that's the whole point of just getting out is just to whether it's a good or in some opinion, not, not good, you know, the experience is the experience, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's good. Like I really miss Korean, like heating floor system. Yeah. Ondo. Ondo, yeah. I really miss it. Cause now that I'm living in basement, it's so cold. Floor is so cold. Every time you step on, like, you know, ah, yeah, 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 you know, like, but in Korea, you sometimes sleep on, you want to sleep on the floor because it's so warm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And actually I, I've done that. And I know a lot of other people who do that as well, where instead of sleeping on the bed where there's a gap and air can come in, they just mm -hmm. decide to move to the floor because it's warm so you know, warm yeah and it's a good night's sleep when you do that mm -hmm. when yeah. i told my boyfriend about that he was so shocked like he can't he can't sit on the floor because he's not used to but everyone in korea is so used to you know what i mean mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it was like wow heating floor system like i wish you know i wish it man they can have it here as well i would love to have it <laughs> yeah, I think I think once people understand what it is and and they experience it, mm -hmm. they're gonna want it. You know, yeah, because heater they make your skin dry, like the air dry. But like if you have if you once you get the floor heating, you don't need heater. So right. warm. Right. Yeah. yeah, and it's genius because I'm, I mean everybody knows that heat rises, so mm -hmm. the whole how every everywhere is warm. At that yeah, point, you exactly, it on. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a that's a great part. You know, not many people know that about Korea. You know, and that's mm -hmm. one thing that that's one of the things that I think Korea should should share is that ondo. I other, know, I know. The other thing I think Korea should share that I haven't seen, uh, and it may be out there now, but um, the sinks 
in Korea, like in a kitchen uh -huh. on the floor, there's a, there's like a button that you can mm -hmm. kick with your foot and it turns the water on. Oh yeah. I don't yeah, know what yeah, they're called, I know what you mean. but I, I, one of the greatest <laughs> inventions ever. And a paddle, right? Like <laughs> exactly, it's like a piano paddle where you just kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, tap it or so you kick good. it. Yeah, it's so good. So because you're you're once you're washing dishes and you you don't have hand for you know you have to turn it on with your elbow. You don't have to do that because you just step on it and the water will come out. Exactly, it's so good. Like oh, yeah. now that you mentioned, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was thinking if I if I ever decide to leave Korea, I've got to I've got to buy one of those. Wherever I go next. <laughs> oh, and the toilet. You know, the heating toilet? On the bidets? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bidet, we need it. Like, oh my goodness. I explained that to my boyfriend, and he's so into massage therapy that he wants it really bad. Like, I oh, really want to get it. <laughs> like, so, forever, whoever who's listening to this and who, whoever, have no idea what we're talking about it's a heating heating system on the toilet so imagine in the winter time you're shivering and you know when you sit on the toilet sometimes it's so cold that like you don't even want to sit down like you don't have to worry about that because like you will feel so warm on your <laughs> glute <laughs> Good. yeah your behinds yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. So good. So those are, those are two great examples of things that Korea has that, mm -hmm. that should be exported to the rest of the uh -huh. world. And uh, Wi-Fi is on subway. <laughs> yeah. And well, yeah, with 5G now, it's, it's ridiculous. I know. I, I, ridiculous. I would love to try it. Like it's because it's going to be so fast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 5G. Oh my goodness. So talking talking about all these things that Korea needs to export to the world. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've been out of Korea for a little bit, what part of the culture do you miss the most? Mm -hmm. Uh maybe like pretty much everything. Food, especially food. Well, we can access the Korean food here as well because there are a lot of Korean towns here but it doesn't taste same okay you know it doesn't taste same um food and language because i'm using english all the time and sometimes like my boyfriend's family when i'm when i'm with my boyfriend family um they speak their own language so i really miss that you know that kind of feeling that i can speak my own language you know with somebody and there's that, a connection that, yeah, connection and, yeah. you know, Korean drama, Korean movie, stuff like that. And mm -hmm. also delivery services. Like delivery we talked services. about earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, it's, it's so expensive here and not much like, choice we have. Mm -hmm. And the restaurants here, they close so early here. Really? Like, I was so shocked. Like they close at like six or seven. But... That's the That's busiest the part of restaurant, you know, like, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, I was so shocked as Korean, like, they close at seven? Like, yeah. that must be the busiest part of the day, you know? Yeah. But some restaurants are like that. And it's funny part is that the latest, the latest restaurants that open up, like, stay latest is Korean restaurants in Toronto. <laughs> No doubt. <laughs> They're bringing that culture with them. They got to yeah. follow the traditions, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I really like that. But even now, it's because of COVID-19. They have to close at 11. Uh, Hi. Yeah. So, uh, what, now that you've traveled, you've lived abroad, you've spent some time in other places, especially uh -huh. Toronto. Uh -huh. um, I'm sure you've talked to people about Korea and shared your experience. I'm sure people have had questions and so forth. Mm -hmm. Is there anything about the culture that maybe people get wrong or that they just don't know about that you'd like to share with people? Um, yeah, I would love to. Uh, so Korea, I'm so proud of my language. Like Korea is like in the whole history, Korea is 
only one country that prevented our language and our letter. We were colonized by Japan, but we prevented our language. I'm so proud of that. And I'm so proud of our letter. It's so scientific. And it's the only letter that someone like created. Like other, other letters, they, you know, they were um, passed through the generation, generation to generation. So that's why Espanol and I mean, Spanish and English and French looks similar. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Looks similar. Letters are similar because they are all from like, they're all, how do you call it? Like all from one. They're, they're, they're. Like a language generation. tree, like a family tree, yeah, but yeah, a language yeah. tree. But mm -hmm. Korean letter is so unique. So unique. No one has this kind of form. And like, this is the only letter that uh, one king like amazing king he per, you know created this letter to for the all for everybody so it's like many 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 uh people who study this language like they they say wow this is very impressive very scientific and they can they can pronounce most like almost every almost every pronunciation how can like letters? sound you mean sound yeah, sounds yeah mm -hmm. sounds but many people don't know, like if, especially my boyfriend, he doesn't know any difference between Chinese letter and Korean letter, Japanese letter, Korean letter. He says that it all looks same, but they're all different. They're so different. Mm -hmm. Because Chinese letter or Japanese letter, they don't represent sound. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But Korean letter, it goes by sound. Right. I'm and not the, sure if I'm explaining the, it. <laughs> no, I think no, I think you're right. Yeah. That the Chinese mm -hmm. characters represent kind of like their their individual pictures or individual yes, words. Yes, exactly. Like Egyptian, Egyptian letters. Yeah. They're like like a drawing. Right. So when you see that letter, you have to know what that means and you have to know how, how you pronounce that word. Mm -hmm. So you have to memorize the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But Korean letter, you just see it. And if you know how to read, like how "kiok" means, like "kiok" good, good sound, mm -hmm. like like alphabet, like alphabet, you know, good sound and "ah" sound. Oh, that means "ka," you mm -hmm. know. It's so easy to remember and e easy, like e one of the easiest letter to learn. Yeah, I think <laughs> yes, and I think one of the reasons that it's so easy to learn, as you mentioned, is each character, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, the "kiok." Each character mm -hmm. is just one sound. Yeah, whereas, exactly. Whereas uh -huh. English, we have blended sounds and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have different sounds. You know, mm -hmm. the, the vowel sounds have two different long and short mm -hmm. sounds. But Korean, no matter what, no matter mm -hmm. the location of the character or anything, it's only just one sound. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, I think that's that's a good point because it's easy. It's it's just you know a specific mm -hmm. sound and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're, we Korea is only country that prevented our language. Like for example, Mexico was colonized by Spain, so they use Spanish. A lot of Latin um, countries they were colonized, and then um, they use Spanish. And uh, countries that were colonized by Brit British or like U.S. they they use um, they use English, mm -hmm. but we prevented our language. I'm so proud of our language. <laughs> yeah, you guys, yeah, you definitely protected it. You protected yeah. it from the beginning against the Japanese yeah. and- mm -hmm. I'm so grateful, I'm so yeah. grateful. Otherwise we will lose our beautiful letters, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And also like we, I have to explain a lot about K-pop. Because <laughs> so many friends, they, they come to me and then, ah, Korean girl, explain me about K-pop, you know? It's a phenomenon now, right? Yeah, yeah, it's so popular. And wherever you go, wherever you go, especially in US, BTS is like hit. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, go ahead, tell us a little bit about K-pop. Oh yeah, sure. Um, um, like my experience with K-pop, like when I went to Hungary, Mishkot, um, like it was a, it was kind of international exchange camp. So there were nine different countries, like students from nine different countries. And Korea was the only Asian country 
they were all from Europe. Okay. So Bulgaria, like Hungary, um, uh, Finland, mm -hmm. like a lot of Poland, a lot of Czech, Czech, Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of different countries. And when I went there, I was like, oh, we're the only, only Asian country. And I, I didn't know how K-pop was famous, how much. But when I went there, they started to play Big Bang music because they wanted to be friends with us. They started to dance and they loved it when we, you know, speak Korean, like we sing in Korean. Mm -hmm. They go crazy. And even when I went to Budapest, which is the capital city of um, Hungary, I saw some girls dancing K-pop in, in a public place. Like, like everybody was watching and they, they were just dancing and I started to dance with them and they wanted to take a picture with me. <laughs> Excellent. And we take a picture and we take a picture. Yeah, it's so popular. And even You're a great Vietnamese ambassador friends, for K-pop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even Vietnamese friends, they love gay drama. So mm. they come and ask me, what is this expression? What is this expression? Like, how do you say this in Korean? Stuff like that. I was like, wow. Hmm. Amazing. Isn't, isn't that a good feeling when people come and ask you, you know, like, how can I communicate in your language? Isn't that a good feeling when you share that? Yeah, I love it. I, I love to share. And I love when they use that phrase to me. Like, Join yeah. team. <laughs> <laughs> well, pretty much no one says that in Korea. <laughs> but they ask you. <laughs> so they're all just saying, good morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Team, team. Team, team. <laughs> Yeah, nobody uses that in Korea. <laughs> people know, people right? look at you like, um, annyeong. Uh, annyeong. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's, that's really great to share about the Korean culture, especially the language aspects of how important it is. And as you mentioned, the scientific, you know, structure of it. I, I think it's been researched as, you know, kind of one of the most scientific languages yeah, you know, I'm telling you. I'm out telling there, you. so mm -hmm. yeah, and it's really good that that people want to want to learn. BTS has helped Big Bang before them. <laughs> yeah, you know. Now, now that I, they have motiv motivation, you know. <laughs> oh my! They want to know the songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah they want to yeah. know the songs and so forth. Like, I want to study language. Yeah, exactly. It's a good way to approach. I think. It's very yeah. good way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that you've been to Hungary and you're in Toronto. You must have been. Mm -hmm. How many places have you traveled to now? Um, I think I went to China and Hungary and US, like um, LA and Chicago, um, Michigan, um, Las, Las Vegas, where else? Oh, that's and a lot Toronto. in the US. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Toronto. Yeah, I think pretty much that's it. Oh, I, I went to Philippines as well. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. it sounds like you've been to a lot of places in Europe and Asia, North America, <laughs> and so forth. What kind of what kind of travel tips would you uh, suggest to people? Mm, definitely language, 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 because it's number one. Because it's so important, um, and like it's so easier. You will have easier access to everything, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, like just for like for example, when I went to New York, I learned Spanish from my boyfriend because mm -hmm. he speaks Spanish. So I I learned a lot of um, I learned a lot of um, expressions in Spanish, and when I speak that in in New York, uh, there are many many Latin friends over there. So they love it. Every time I speak Spanish, they laugh and they love it and they want to be friend with me. So it's good privilege that you, so you can be so popular if you learn, you know, their language yeah. and you will have better access to everything. Mm. Oh, yeah, this is, this is another story, but like it's kind of unique thing about Toronto. Uh -huh. They use word washroom, washroom. instead of restaurant <laughs> or <laughs> instead of restroom or bathroom so mm -hmm. when i went to toronto because i always learned we have to say um bathroom or restroom so i asked the guy um excuse me sir where can i find the restroom he didn't understand me what uh bathroom 
oh washroom he correct me so when i went to new york now that i'm so used to say washroom i asked them oh where can i find the washroom and they don't understand me it's yeah. like so interesting like wow it's so interesting hmm. yeah yes it, especially things like that when you need to go to the bathroom or you need to <laughs> order some food and words are a little bit different yeah absolutely yeah, at least learn um, some basic information, like uh, expressions, like, oh, where's the washroom? Yeah. Or how much is this? <laughs> yeah, Stuff learn like the that. lingo. That's what we say, learn the lingo. Lingo, yeah. lingo. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I think my brother actually mentioned that word, lingo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just kind of, you know, the the local phrase, like washroom. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 something. yeah. We call it lingo, so. Mm -hmm. And if you have, if you tip. know how to say thank you in their language, let's say like you're going to Vietnam, Vietnam and you know how to say Dam An, which is thank you in Vietnamese, like they will give you more, you know, like, oh, they, they speak our language. They, they think we're cute. <laughs> they would think we're cute and mm -hmm. they give us more and they want to help us more. Yeah. And I, th yeah. I think that, that that's a great point that I think is kind of a respect issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, you know, exactly. A lot of people just travel when they think, well, I'll just speak English in every country. That's not true. Like if you show respect and say, look, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'd like to say thank you in your language or mm -hmm. ask you how much or something. Basic yeah, yeah, phrases, exactly. like you said. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. goes a long way, a very long mm -hmm. way. Like maybe you've experienced, like if you speak Korean, in a restaurant, maybe ajumma, like some ladies, like owner sometimes gives you more, right? Yeah. yeah? Well, when I yeah. say emo. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, emo. try Nuna. Nuna. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The older ladies might give me a slap on the head if I say <laughs> Nuna. <laughs> I just but, say Ani, you know? Yeah. Ah, Ani, yeah, emo. Yeah, emo works good. Emo yeah, it, works really good. Yeah, I, I, I think that works the best. <laughs> emo. <laughs> emo. <laughs> yeah. And for those listening, emo just means aunt, right? Yeah, and auntie. Yeah. yeah, auntie. So you're using kind of like a polite, informal form to get the waitress's mm -hmm. attention. Yeah. Polite and friendly. Like and friendly. friendly. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, exactly. Oh, my God. You made me laugh so <laughs> Oh, it's yeah. good. It's good. Mm -hmm. It is good. It is. So I want to, I, I kind of want to move on just a little bit and, and kind of talk a little bit about you. You okay. decided to leave Korea to pursue education in the arts, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So you're like the expert now, right? <laughs> on your way to be, I should say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am an expert because words have power. I want to speak positive. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I personally know that you've been into theater for for such a long time. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. What what do you see? Like, what is theater's role in culture? Whether it's Korean culture, Toronto culture, what um, do you think theater's role is in in culture? Um. Um, I think, well, personally, um, I believe theater helps you a lot for the language and to understand culture because like it represents, mm -hmm. let's say, um, for example, musical, musical ballet, ballet, mm -hmm. which means laundry, <laughs> they represent like, <laughs> In Korean, <laughs> ballet. <laughs> ballet. That, that shows all, like, it con contains, like, deep, deep culture about soul, life in soul. Like, how life in soul, like, how tough it is to be. And it contains that culture and mm -hmm. the, like, the atmosphere of the society. You can okay. see through the theater. For um, for example, and another example, Rent. Uh, you know musical Rent? I've heard of it. Yeah. Ah, uh, musical Rent is very very popular musical, and it's the uh, it can it shows the la how life in New York is like truly. Okay. Because they sing about it and they speak about the life and show 
through the theater how life it is in New York. So it's kind a pretty time. pretty yeah. accurate representation too. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Like I, I can tell like it shows a lot about the culture and the, how life it is over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and um, I'm sorry. No, keep <laughs> going, please. Personally, it helps me a lot to learn language, like and learn the mm, kind of atmosphere of that society. So since I was young, I I watch musicals like all the time, and it gives me an idea how people think and how people react and how people live over there and how people speak. So like since I was young, I think it was a privilege for me to watch a lot of different musicals, like French musicals, um, like Broadway musicals, Korean musicals. Like I kind of have an idea like how people react and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a, the musicals specifically uh, along with, you know, various plays that are, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. on Broadway and so forth. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm as you said, they kind of portray the society and culture much more than a movie would. Ex right? Movies yeah, exactly. are all about like portray. Like, yeah, that's the word. Perfect yeah. word. And, but movies, movies are all about just kind of entertainment. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So many people see a movie and think that that's real life, especially from different I know, countries, I, right? Yeah, I know. I just watched um, Fast and Furious yesterday, last night with my boyfriend in Tokyo. I was like, no, 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 that's, that's not how it is. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's not how it is. And sometimes like, um, for example, in Toronto, there's Kim's Convenience was a hit. Like, Love that show. <laughs> you serious? Like, I, I don't like that show. You probably <laughs> don't because you live there and you know what it's like now. But I being know, an I outsider, like... <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean, as a Korean, like, I saw an episode that, like, a girl from Korea, like, Korean peasant coming to, coming visit Toronto. So, I mean. yeah, I mean, <laughs> the way she behaves, the way she, like, speaks, and the way she behaves is just totally different. That's not, you can't represent, that. that's not an image of Korea. Right. I was like so mad about it. Like, <laughs> you can't do this to us. Who is the writer of this episode, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, like, you know what she said? When she takes a photo, she said, Can mm -hmm. you believe that? You guys- I've okay. never heard that, yeah. Well, we say kimchi, right? right? You guys, sometimes we say cheese. We don't say mozzarella cheese. Uh, mozzarella cheese. You don't say that, you know, like, it was, like, so awkward. <laughs> so, like, sometimes don't trust in movie or drama or episode. That's not how it is in life, real life. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But, like, theater, they represent really good. Yes. I Yeah, I've seen a, a few plays um, here in Korea, kind of local plays, and, mm -hmm. that, you know, afterwards I'd have questions about, like, is, you know, is that really you know, how they would respond in certain situations. And my wife would say, yeah, that's, that's pretty close to being accurate. So I think that's a really good point to make about culture is if you want to understand, stop watching TV shows and movies. <laughs> they're exactly. fun. They're fun. They're funny. They're just for entertainment, but they're not a representation. Mm -hmm. If you want a representation, oh, you. Mm -hmm. then, you know, a play or a musical, might be a better representation. I can't speak for everybody, but you said that through Korea that they're they're much more accurate. So that's good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would highly recommend that. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Local shows, like they speak and sing about their own lives. So you can feel the atmosphere, like yeah. in life. Because like movie or like drama or stuff like that that one you have to feel it through screen so screen so it's kind of restricted yeah there's like I, a disconnect uh -huh. exactly uh -huh. if you go to, on a theater it's another energy you can feel the energy of the actors and right. yeah you will you can be in that situation it can be in that moment mm -hmm. i really highly recommend yeah 
Yeah, so you make a great point about how important that the arts are, especially plays and musicals and so forth. Mm -hmm. what, what do you see for the future of the arts? Like, do you see future this? I, I hear a lot when I talk to people that they don't really go to plays and such anymore. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to say it's a dying art because I, I personally hope it never dies because it's so important as we were just talking about with culture. But what do you see for the future of, of plays and the arts in that form? Well, I think um, a little bit scary because now YouTube is growing and there's COVID-19, they're isolating people. So I, I really hope this goes away. In Jesus' name, I pray um, we all as soon do. as possible, mm. mm -hmm, as soon as possible. But I believe art will never die. I believe so because it's in our heart and we're all artistic. We have all, we all have artistic part of, part in our spirit. I believe so because I believe in God and I believe God is the artist. Look at the trees and the, all those nature. It is art. It's such an art. And it's beautiful. It's an art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's in our spirit. So I believe it will never die. And I think art, future of art is, I think, very bright. But we have to pray that COVID-19 <laughs> goes away. <laughs> yes, and quickly. Mm -hmm. quickly. Quickly, quickly but that's so that's so refreshing to hear especially from you know an art student mm -hmm. now that that you hope and you you feel that it's still very much alive and mm -hmm. that it can will yeah, continue like, to be it, art may change the form for example i i see a lot of youtubers like art artists in the youtube like mm -hmm. it might change the form but it will never die because we like our spirit will express like find the way to express. Yeah. I believe so. Well said, well said. <laughs> yeah, well said. Mm -hmm. Well, um, is, there any, is there anything coming up in the arts or anything that you wanna kind of share with us? Maybe in Toronto or, I don't know if you're still paying attention in Korea because we, we're not closed down. We can still go places. <laughs> oh, really? Like, I don't know, like, I, I never heard, like, I heard, like, theaters are closed in Korea? Well, it was kind of yes and no for a bit because uh -huh. they didn't want large groups of people uh -huh. to gather in the theater in such a small area. Mm -hmm. But I think that they're open at your own risk. I think mm -hmm. you probably have to wear a mask. You have to wear a mask everywhere now. Yeah. Um, but I can't say specifically like Soul Theater or something like that. I can't say mm -hmm. specifically, but um, yeah, I think there are shows still going on, but uh -huh. um, like I saw, like I saw news that now in Toronto, cinema is open. Hmm. So that means school, theaters uh -huh. are open then, like plays and theaters are open. Then? I hope so. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about the theater. I'm not sure about how theater situation in New York is, but they're starting starting to kind of open again. Great. Open again, like so schools good. and centers are opening again. I yeah. hope theater opens again too. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. I hope, well, theaters and movie theaters and mm -hmm. parks, and I hope everything opens up again because we need to be social again for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's kind of frustrating. We got to stay strong. We got to you know be grateful for yep. what we have that's we right. have each other <laughs> that's right and we need it mm -hmm. we need it well this has been a fantastic conversation <laughs> absolutely fantastic but time's kind of coming to an end for us now oh no i know but before we go i want to give you the opportunity to kind of promote anything that's going on or with you or an organization that you're with so go ahead and share anything you you would like um, sure. Um, okay, now that my school is about to open, so whoever interested in our school, it's the American Musical Dramatic Academy in New York, and there's another campus in LA, Hollywood. It's such an amazing performing arts school. Like, it's one of the top performing arts school in US. So, uh-huh. If you ha if you are interested, 
please contact. And I think they're gonna open again. So you will have, a, and they have also have online classes, but I don't recommend it. <laughs> so just look up on an edition and look for seize, seize your moment. And um, maybe. Can you, can you say that again? What was the name of the school one more time? Um, AMDA, we say A-M-D-A, AMDA, the American Musical and Dramatic Academy. There you go. All right, mm -hmm. AMDA, everybody. Mm -hmm. Go sign um, up. Mm -hmm. And recently I'm studying Spanish a lot. Maybe I'm going to go perform in Mexico. <laughs> well, we all hope that happens. Yeah, I will. I will. Um, Remember we used to sing, I, I used to sing popular with you. <laughs> yeah, in the hallways Remember of the that? school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you were wearing a wig and vestas. <laughs> what a memory. Hey, that, yeah, that's an experience I won't forget. I got to, uh, yeah, I got to take part in a play. So that was fun. I, yeah, I remember you told me that, um, like you were impressed when I was practicing. And you told me like, oh, um, you do have a talent and look for an opportunity to study abroad. That mm -hmm. helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. And look at me. Look at me. Thank, look at thanks you thanks now. To you. <laughs> thanks to you. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what amazing. I hope. That's, you know, that's one, that's one thing, not with, only with this podcast, but in teaching and so forth. Is I, I just want people to recognize their dreams and get out there. You know, there is no, mm -hmm. there are no limits. There are no mm -hmm. limits. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you like put your interest and your effort, it you it will flourish. That's right. That will flourish. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's a that's a great way to put it. Put your effort into it, and something will happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you do you mind if I sing a little bit? Be my guest. I'll pause. I'll <laughs> let you take over right now. Okay. And we're just all one second. <laughs> What a treat. <laughs> okay, my speaker is getting ready. Okay. Just a little bit. I'm going to sing popular in three languages because I'm working on it. Mm, uh, uh, uh. I'm not warmed up, just keep in mind it's morning here. <laughs> but I'll try my best. All right. So it goes Spanish, Korean, English, I guess. Um, so this popular, I, I'm gonna sing popular for you and for everybody. <laughs> we, I sang this song with Jeff, actually. <laughs> so it's been years. <laughs> yeah, um, well, we can't wait yeah. to hear it. Uh, yeah, it's a song number, musical number from Musical Wicked. It's a song that is very bright and this girl is trying to like telling her friend that oh I'm gonna make you popular because this girl is so popular. <laughs> uh uh you hear me? We can hear you, yep. Okay. Oh sorry. Uh-uh. Sabes que al fin ahora que eres mi amiga vas a hacer mi nuevo proyecto. You want me to sing in English? Or... Keep going in Spanish. Do... Okay, okay. This is your show. This is your time. Go for it. Okay, okay. Realmente no tienes que hacer eso. Yo sé. Esto es lo que me hace ser tan lindo. Si alguien no es tan linda, tan linda como yo, y en serio no hay nadie tan linda como yo, mi corazón se puede conmover. Si le juzgue su transformación en cuanto a mí su salvación, yo sé, yo sé lo que sé puede hacer, y yo daré favor. 
No importa que tu caso sea el peor, tranquilo, hay remedio para ti. Yo creeré en ti. No se va. Muy, muy, muy popular. Tú vas a ser popular porque de diré en cablón, tratará en calar con mi cuerpo. Quiero pinostar como coquetear Lo que lograrás tenemos de popular Te ayudo a ser popular Sabrás con qué insignia ti Cuando hay que mentir Como tú no te importa Anda pues, contigo hay mucho que trabajar Lleva el país, lleva el país, lleva el país Wow, nice transition too. Beautifully done. Well done. I hope this delivered joy and happiness through the interview. <laughs> That's a great way to end this interview. That is perfect. Yeah, I'm an entertainer, <laughs> so I entertain people. <laughs> well, you certainly did there, and I hope everybody listening enjoyed it. Um, and, <laughs> um, and excuse me, I didn't put any makeup. I'm, I'm not wearing glasses, but... <laughs> I'm a performer, so if you want to talk about theater or if you want to ask, have any, if you have any question about my school, you can reach out to me. Yes, Ali, um, you can find me in the Facebook. <laughs> Are you on Twitter time. or Instagram? How else? Do you have a YouTube channel or anything you want to um, shout out? I do have a YouTube channel, but I, I don't update that, like, that much, but I do update my stuff, like uh, my my boyfriend's nephew and like my life here. Mm. Um, I do have it. Yes, Ali, it's, that's, that's my name. You can find, search me in the YouTube. And that's my Facebook name in the YouTube. I mean, in the Facebook name. Um, I have Instagram, Wicked Yesa 4141. So, oh, you're always welcome to reach out to me. All right, there you go. If you guys have any questions about the arts, you know who to contact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Yesa, it's been a pleasure and an honor to speak with you. Thank you for being on. Thank you so much. Let's be strong. Let's be strong. We got this. We got this. Great message. All yeah. right, everybody. Thank you for turning into Yuba, uh, Yerba Travels. And can't wait to get on the next podcast and share more information with you. Thanks for turning in. Signing Thank off. Thank you. Bye.